Have you ever watched a video on YouTube that's so well produced, so well made, and then thought, maybe I can do that too? But after you tried it, you learned how incredibly challenging it is to make a coherent video. Or maybe you're in the market to start making your own YouTube videos and don't know where to start. Well, the good thing is this video is for you. So in this video, I will walk you through five tips that have helped me create these amazing YouTube videos uh, over the years. But before we get into it, hello, my name is Ulysses Aoki. I am a photographer and a creator based in Tokyo. This is my fourth hmm, year on YouTube, and I've gone through many things uh, throughout the process, whether being as a creator or as a human being. And again today, I wanted to share some of these learnings and share them with people who are interested in making better videos. I want to thank Artlist for sponsoring this video, more on that later, and let's get into it. The first issue that most people face, and this took me a very long time to recognize this, but it is actually uh, choosing a format or framework for the video. If you're not used to video production or creating YouTube videos for a long time, this is what actually throws most people off and confuses them throughout the entire process. My advice to anyone that wants to make a video before you do anything like the shooting, the editing, choosing the music, choose a framework for the video. Is it just going to be a talking head? Is it going to be a vlog? Is it going to be a voiceover with a bunch of B-roll in it? Or is it going to be a balanced mixture of A-roll and B-roll? In my case, I've settled quite nicely with this format these days of A-roll of me talking, hi, and B-roll of something that is relevant to the topic that I'm discussing in hand. If you are really OCD about it, you can set up a Notion page and Notion project, um, have everything laid out from shot lists to discussion points and scripts and all that, but I like to keep things pretty flexible. I might have a Notion page with some notes with discussion points, but to me, again, since I like being flexible and having a little bit of freedom on my thoughts, uh, I usually stop there. This naturally leads us to the second piece of advice I have and it is to set the tone of the video. And here what I like to do is think about things like what I want the thumbnail to be, what I want the title to be, what kind of music I'll be using. And in order to gather some ideas, um, I do a few things. The first one being uh, looking into other YouTubers, YouTubers uh, videos on similar topics. There, I might try to look into thumbnail and title combinations that are doing well. There are a few things you can do here. Uh, one, you can use this tool called TubeBuddy but I actually don't use TubeBuddy. Uh, what I personally do, and this is something any, anyone can do, is you can filter YouTube videos uh, through popularity or relevance or whatnot, and just scroll, scroll around and look at you know, the dates of when the videos were published, how many views they're getting, what kind of you know, tone they're setting, see? I even might watch a few of them to understand the tone that they're setting. You know, are they kind of cool videos? Are they dramatic videos? Are they, again, like B-roll videos with a voiceover? Or are they kind of like youtube -y <laughs> videos and maybe that's not the vibe I'm going for, right? So now we have a better grasp of the image and the tone of the video, some of the aesthetics of it. And then what I will do is start looking for music that can complement my video. Maybe for you, not using music is also a creative choice, and I totally respect that, and that's also a very valid option to take. But I personally find myself pretty mundane and boring sometimes, so I like having uh, some music in the background. And the thing you want to do here is, you know, make sure you have the image or the tone of the video in your head because the most unsettling thing about certain videos, I think, is the awkwardness of music choice. An example being, you know, you don't want to have a tutorial video with overly dramatic music. For my videos, I usually try to get uh, B-roll footage first before I shoot this kind of A-roll. Or you don't want to click on a video that has a thumbnail of a bunch of fluffy dolls and then suddenly click it and then have a bunch of death metal music running in the background. They'll also be very weird. To find good quality licensed music, uh, I usually use Artlist, who are kindly sponsoring this video. Artlist is a wonderful place to look for music that is created by real artists, and the music is also curated in a way that you can uh, find the music that you have in your mind uh, quite easily. 
All of the music used in today's video was found and licensed from Artlist. From the more tense music that I used in the intro to chiller beats, I found all of this on Artlist. And if you're interested, please click the link below, which is an affiliate. But um, anyone who subscribes through this link gets two extra months free added to their annual subscription. Okay, in this next tip, since we now know the format of the video that you want to make, we know the overall tone and what kind of content, so we're in a pretty good place. And here we finally get to shoot video, but here's a tip. Shoot the video according to the plan. Since I know I'll probably get a million questions about this, uh, before we dive too deep into this topic, I wanted to go through some of the things that I use to shoot video. I use the Sony FX3 uh, and only the Sony FX3 these days, brilliant camera. Uh, and I use the 24mm 1.4 G Master on the, on the camera um, and also use a 55mm Ansys F1.8 as well. The reason for these two lens pairings is I want a wider shot with a 24. I like to punch in a video a lot too, so having a wider range helps. And then the 55mm helps with different types of talking head shots or tighter uh, b-roll shots. If you want me to make a video on the gear that I use uh, for YouTube, then please let me know in the comments down below. These days for my videos, I try to get as much b-roll footage as possible first, and then what I like to do is create a sequence, kind of like a b-roll sequence, that complements the video topic in hand. A few tips on b-roll is one, uh, try to get more footage than you think you may need. I'll get to the reason uh, later. Two, try to shoot things from different angles or different focal lengths. And three, try to take scenes that complement each other as well. Let's say I want a B-roll sequence of me shooting the streets, uh, taking photos. Then what I would do is I would have a wide shot of me kind of walking around about with my camera, and then maybe I would raise the camera to my eye, and that's when I use the longer focal length and then cut uh, to myself raising the camera or something like my eye uh, to create a nice flow and also a variety of shots. After that, I'll start shooting the A-roll of the film, which also functions as a voiceover, which is basically what I'm doing right here. And the important part about this step is the quality of the audio. I hope I'm not messing anything up in this video, but yeah, this helps, right? In general, people can stand bad videography, but cannot stand bad audio. So be very, very careful. For this, I usually have two options in hand. One is using the boom mic. I can handhold it or I can hang it over my head. And the next option would be to use a lavalier mic, a one that clips onto you. That's also a pretty good option as well. Okay, that brings us to tip number four, which I've kind of implied in the other tips, which is to not just be a talking head. And let's just face the reality that nobody wants to watch someone that they don't know ranting about something they don't really care about, or they don't want to watch someone that's not very entertaining. And over the course of my time on YouTube these past years, I've come to the conclusion that I'm not a very entertaining person, to be honest. So what can we do to spice things up in the video is the next question. What I try to do in general is to negate as much A-roll, so this talking head stuff, as much as possible by inserting B-roll. Just as a rule of thumb to keep in mind, this is, at least in my case, having nothing change on the screen for 10 plus seconds on a YouTube video can be quite stale, especially if that static shot doesn't really have a purpose to it being static. But I've learned that this actually goes as well for B-roll, so having the same single B-roll shot for like 10 plus 20 seconds or something is quite tedious as well. One thing you can do to solve this issue of needing infinite b-roll basically is by using stock footage. The great thing about Artlist is that they're kind of a one-stop shop when it comes to video production so they have a licensed music. Um, they also have licensed stock footage. So in this case what I would do is I would go into Artlist, I would look for stock footage that helps support a discussion point that I have for the video specifically. In general I like to use stock footage in a way that 
isn't too obvious that it is stock footage. There are a few things you can do in order to prevent this from happening. Like a good example being I won't use some random person using a computer in an office and stick it over my video if it has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. What I also like to do is to apply a similar color grade on the stock footage that I got. Uh, something similar to what I'm using in the entire video to create visual consistency throughout. Overall, I think this fourth point is much more important than people might think. Especially in my earlier days of YouTube, I would watch these videos of creators go on and on and on on a video without inserting any b-roll and then i would see that and be like huh i guess you can just do that and people watch the video anyways but i learned over time that that's a position that they've earned over a very long period of time or they're just you know very entertaining people which again i am not so i learned the hard way that cutting corners does not work for me on youtube My last tip is a seemingly small one, but I learned that it is quite important for me to create chapters on my YouTube videos. This helps the viewers understand the value that you're trying to bring to the table uh, throughout the video. And similar to tip number one, it helps create a framework of thought for my own videos. As a simple example, since this video is called, you know, five tips, what I did was create five chapters around these tips, uh, create discussion points around them, and I also made transitions that follow up on each topic. And it also makes it easier for you to edit down unnecessary prolonged ramblings. You know, a video can get extremely, extremely long uh, without even realizing it. I'm guessing that's happening with this video. So, whatever, you know, helps you cut down unnecessary noise is a very welcome tool to your kit. So everyone, thanks for watching this video. That's the end of it. Happy 2023. And if you're interested, I have a Patreon page that I've renewed this year and I've sorted it out quite well, I think. So if you're interested in, you know, keep getting in touch, then sign up for my Patreon and I'll see you guys there. Bye, Sandaro. Bye. And here, what I like to think about is... Hmm. YouTubers, YouTubers uh, videos. Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. These no oh, what? what? A few tips on B-roll. <laughs> mm. mm. Uh, longer. Oh, why does the light keep on changing? What the hell?